Am I finally going to finish Beidou? Oh look, it's Ali Pumpkin! Welcome to Gospel Land. I am Alias and let me tell you something. You are late for Halloween. Yeah, I, I don't care if it's August you are late for Halloween or at least I'm always late for Halloween because I start too late and then there's a million cosplays that I want to do and I never have time for them. So this year I have decided to start early and I'm going to be making some halloween -y stuff. And the first thing that I'm going to make is an amazing circular cloak because I love cloaks. I may have done like half a dozen or a dozen cloaks like oh yeah and there was that time that I had to do 20 cloaks for my niece and or her classmates for Halloween yeah I've, I've done a few cloaks so it's something I like making and today I'm just going to be making the most majestic cloak you can imagine because it's a total circular cloak which covers all your body and you can't see anything and it has a hood and and I just love it it's actually a quite quite an easy project unless you decide to just hand sew everything by hand which may or may not have happened for this project but hey it's actually quite easy and I'm going to show you how to make them of course as always you can use my patterns to do the cloak but it's actually quite easy it's basically a circle with an opening for the neck it just saves you sometimes if if someone drafts it for you, so it's up to you if you want to download the pattern, I will also leave the link in the description. This cloak in particular is actually going to be to wear with my Anya cosplay, which I have shown you again in the channel how to make, and I'm actually going to use it to just wear it for many other things because it has a hood, and for cosplay it's great when you want to just do your awesome entrance in which you just go with your cloak and nobody knows what character or what you're wearing underneath so yeah I, I just love cloaks have I told you already so yeah before I just keep talking about how awesome cloaks are and how we should wear them every day or at least whenever it's cold I'm just going to just show the video of how I made my cloak let's start by cutting the fabric the ideal scenario is that you get a double width fabric, like the ones used for curtains or for sheets. Mine is a sheeting fabric. Then you can fold your fabric in four. There should be two folds at the sides and one at the top. And you want to place your pattern right at the corner. Don't worry about seam allowances for now. Once your pattern is in the right position, we can cut this piece first. This time, I am going to leave some seam allowances at the bottom hem, and I will be cutting the edge a couple of centimeters away from the pattern. Make sure your pattern is aligned in the right corners. For the neck opening, notice that my pattern is the same for the front and the back, but the neck is different for each part. I am going to draw the back first leaving a centimeter of seam allowance to attach the hood. Then I am going to unfold the top of the fabric and draw the front of the collar. Keep in mind I'm still keeping the side folded, so I'm gonna have the same on both sides. Make sure you align the front and the back correctly and cut the opening for the collar. This method is great to avoid sewing some extra seams, however, you will need to cut the front edge so you can actually wear your cloak. Very carefully and following the fold, cut the front of your cloak, but just at the front, so make sure you start at the pointy end. Cutting the fabric like this is technically not correct because there will be no seam allowances space at the front, but as this is a cloak so big, it won't really make a difference when you wear it. And by the way, if you just want a quick and awesome cloak, you already have it, so you can stop here. I am however going to show you how I do the lining and the hood as well. I am going to do the same as before for the lining, however this time I am using a single width fabric, so I decided to have my seam at the back to avoid sewing the shoulders, which you can do by the way. 
So this time again I'm folding my fabric in four but I am going to place my pattern about a centimeter away off the edge so I can sew this part later on. Again, there is a fold at the top which I want to place exactly where my pattern is to avoid having to add the seam allowances and I'm going to be cutting this part again. Cut the pattern leaving some seam allowance and don't forget to cut the neck opening as well. For this part I will need to pin the back of the cloak and sew it on my machine. Once I had cut all the big pieces, I was ready to do the capelet, so I just trimmed the rest of the pattern away so it was easier for me to move and to use it. You can always tape the pieces back for the next project, so don't throw away anything and it will save you some time next time. I was lucky enough to fit my capelet lining as a full circle in the remaining fabric, which will save me some time later. I just cut the pieces as before and don't forget to add the neck opening as well. And I also cut the two pieces of the hood on the rest of the fabric. And by the way, I usually do put weights on top of the patterns so the fabric won't shift as I cut it. And for this piece, I did it. For the rest, I kind of forgot, but as they were so big and heavy, they actually did not move, so I didn't need to. Just make sure you add your seam allowances as well and cut the hood piece. And the process was exactly the same for the black fabric, just this time I wasn't as lucky and I did have to do this one in two parts. Now I can just finish assembling the cable with the seam at the back. And also sew the back of my hood. It is time to assemble the hood. I am going to attach the hood to the neck opening of the capelet. Make sure you are placing the right sides together and matching the seams. Then you can sew the collar. And here is a cool tip for your hood. If your fabric is very lightweight and it doesn't keep its shape, you can always add an extra layer of organza to your lining so it stays up. The color doesn't really matter because it won't be seen later on. Just make sure you attach it to the lining or to the main fabric before you assemble it all together. Once again, matching the seams and with right sides together, I'm going to attach the hood to my lining. And remember that this time I will be using the longer piece of the cloak. Let's attach the lining next. If you follow the instructions on my pattern, you only need to sew the lining to the main fabric and then turn your fabric. However, 
I am going to be a little bit fancier than that and I'm going to completely change it because I could just be telling you one way of doing it but why not telling you how to do it in a way that your lining completely aligns. This way takes much longer and it can get a little bit tedious but it will make sure your lining is not visible from the outside. I am going to iron all the seams inwards before I attach my lining. This can be a little bit tricky on those scares, but if you go carefully and slowly you will be able to turn them completely. Notice that my hem is quite wide and I am doing this on purpose for later on. Before I attach the bottom of the lining, I am going to pin the neck of the cloak. And making sure my lining is as straight as possible, I will start folding the lining inwards about a centimeter above the hemline and pin it in place. This way, I'm making sure my lining is shorter and it won't be seen from the outside of the cloak. And of course, you can now top stitch the edge in place and just finish it, but come on, who will want to do that when you can spend three days sewing the hem by hand? Oh, please, you definitely haven't seen my other videos, so here I go. Shall I remind you that you have to do the bottom part as well? Mm, no? Mm, yeah, I thought so. Once the capelet and the cloak are fully lined, I can sew the neck openings together so they become one piece. Notice that I am just sewing the neckline, but I left the hoods hanging on each side. We are going to finish that last. And same as before, I just need to fold my lining a bit away from the edge and sew this part. A couple of buttons to decorate it and the cloak was finished. I hope you enjoyed this project, I absolutely loved making it and I can't wait to finally wear it! And remember that if you want to download the pattern there will be a link in the description when you can get it. I would love to know what are your plans for this Halloween so leave me a comment and let me know and remember that your likes, comments and follows help me to grow this channel so I can bring you more tutorials and more content so don't forget to click those buttons. 
I am looking forward to see you in the next adventure, so don't forget to come back! See you next time! Bye! like that fabric. Yeah. Is that in your new bed? <laughs> Fluffy. Okay, you can stay there. <laughs>